Hi, welcome to this teaching from Foundation Church Belfast. My name is David. I'm the pastor of Foundation Church and we are uh, in the second part now of our series called Restoration. And we're examining together over these next few weeks the book, the Old Testament book called Ezra. Why are we using Ezra? Well, uh, Ezra is all about God's people being restored back to God's place so that God's worship uh, can begin again. And so we're using this as a, um, a way to stir ourselves and remind ourselves as a church what we're all about and prepare ourselves as we go back uh, to gathered worship together, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future. We're going to see uh, three uh, standout features today of the community on mission that we see here in Ezra chapter 2. First of all, um, it has the trait of pioneering. Uh, secondly, it has the traits or the, the you know the uh, the value of diversity, and thirdly, of connectedness. Uh, before we get there, though, a quick review of where we're at. Uh, the people of Israel, God's chosen people, are in exile. Uh, they've been living under captivity of the people of Babylon for uh, fifty or so years, uh, and yet now the book of Ezra, the beginning of the book of Ezra, people are stirred. They're stirred by God. Um, to return back to Jerusalem and to begin building again the temple. Not only were the people of Israel stirred, of course, but we saw uh, King Cyrus, the king of the Persian Empire, the leader of the known world at that time, who replaced uh, the Babylonian Empire, said to the people of Israel, because God had stirred him, return back to your place, rebuild your temple so that your God may be worshipped and honoured. That's what he said, and that's what we saw beginning last week. And we saw how God stirred the people and he supplied them with the resources they needed to kickstart uh, the restoration project. Product, uh, project. And now in chapter two, uh, we actually see uh, the first wave of people returning back to Israel. Um, it's a very detailed list. It's a list of names and people. Uh, and so on one level, it can seem rather dull. Uh, for you and I as we read this. But for the, the, the people of Israel, as they read the history books, this is incredibly exciting because this is a list of the first wave of people back to the homeland to begin the restoration project. project. And as, as we'll see uh, on a closer reading, uh, we will see these three outstanding features of the community on mission, three traits. The first, as I've said already, is that they are full of what we're going to be calling the pioneering spirit. The, the, the restoration community is full of pioneering spirit. What does that mean? It means here we have a group of people uh, who are forging ahead uh, with God's plans. They, are, they have been stirred by God and they are going ahead. They are obeying, obeying him. Don't forget, um, as we saw last week, those who were stirred uh, were allowed voluntarily to go back to, uh, to Jerusalem. There was no requirement for everybody to go back. Um, they could have stayed in the relative comfort and familiarity of, of Babylon. And so the, this group of people that we see listed in Ezra chapter 2 are, are full of this pioneering spirit. Courage. I'm going to have a go. We're going to listen to God. We're going to forge forward. We're going into the unknown. We have no idea what might happen to us. Yes, of course, these people had the big picture. They knew that God had called them and stirred them to restore worship. They knew they had the promise, promises of the prophets, God's word to his people through the prophets of age, of, of the ages. You know, God is going to restore you. He's going to bring you back. He's going to uh, remodel you and use you again. They had those big pictures in place. But the details of how they would go about doing that remained completely at this stage, completely unknown. So, so we have this group of people stirred by God, full of faith, with a big vision for what God had called them to do. Just imagine, though, for a few moments, the, 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 possibly the scenes that met them when they eventually made that long journey uh, over a period of weeks back to Jerusalem again. Scenes of destruction, uh, because that's how the Babylonians left Jerusalem and the temple. Uh, Fifty years previously, uh, the Babylonian forces had completely wrecked Jerusalem and the temple. And so the people, this, this pioneering community on mission, saw nothing as, except a bunch of broken down towns, uh, deserted areas, overgrown foliage. Um, the temple itself, of course, laid in ruins. The army of Babylon had seen to that. They'd burned it 
Uh, what was left of it, they were smashed into pieces. There would be rocks strewn around all over the place. You know, moss covered the rocks, maybe a bit of graffiti. You could just about make out where the temple used to be, but the rest of it was uh, was 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 uh, open to the elements. Maybe you have um, gone out for a, a stroll uh, or a walk around one of these old ruins that we have dotted around uh, our country. Um, I've, I've been to, maybe you've been to Nendrum, uh, the old monastic site in County Down, and you sort of wander around these old um, brick foundations, or Mavilla Abbey, perhaps. Uh, one of the, the uh, standout um, structures that we have in Belfast, I believe, is the, is the Carlisle Memorial Methodist Church, just at the foot end of the, the Crumlin Road. Uh, it's an imposing building. At, at one stage, it was one of the largest, if not the largest, churches in all of Ireland. And now if you drive past it, either on the West Link or on the way up to uh, the Crumlin Road or the Antrim Road, you'll see it there, a crumbling mess. It has hoardings around it to prevent people from getting in and injuring themselves. Um, they, they may as well put up a sign to say God was formerly worshipped in this building. A once a glorious structure to the praise of God and now broken. Windows are smashed and the only life that's going on in the church as it stands, is that it's a home for pigeons and a place for rodents. And imagine that on a much greater scale now. We're talking of an entire city in that kind of state when the people went back to Jerusalem. And yet they had this pioneering spirit. The, their calling was clear. The challenges were huge. And yet God stirred them and supplied them. They were the pioneering community on mission. And, you know, I, I, we saw that same pioneering spirit at the outset of our time together at Foundation Church Belfast, right back at the beginning. We had a clear and we have a clear calling from God. And, 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 and like the Israelites, the challenges were significant. And yet people were stirred and God supplied the resources that we needed in order to form ourselves as a church. In fact, one, uh, for me anyway, one of the clear factors in giving the, being given the green light for starting Foundation Church Belfast was the gathering of a group of people coming together who possessed this pioneering spirit that we see here. The, the formation of a community or mission that God was doing. He was bringing these people together. And, and Foundation Church Belfast began as a group of people with a vision for what God wants to do. And they joined the team. And they said to one another, and we said to one another, look, we don't see the details here. We can't see the step-by-step -step program of how God is going to do this. But we are excited about the vision of what God wants to do in and through and around us. So let's go. And so we joined together. And together as a team, we planted Foundation Church Belfast. And so if you're listening to this message, and you are one of those first group of people stirred uh, by God and his Holy Spirit, then can I say personally to you, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking that step of faith. Thank you for, for daring to dream about God, what God wants to do and can do when a group of people come to him and submit to him and listen to him and, and obey him. Thank you. Thank you for serving wholeheartedly. Thank you for, for giving your time and your money to the cause, to enable ministry to begin. But you know, that pioneering spirit that we saw at the beginning of Foundation Church Belfast still continues. We're, we're still in that pioneering phase as a church. In fact, I am more certain now than I have ever been that God is using us at Foundation Church Belfast to bring his kingdom powerfully as we serve and as we take steps in faith in our service to, to one another and to our city. The calling uh, remains strong. And so we need to be a people uh, of faith, of vision, and most definitely of courage, like the people in Ezra, chapter 2. We've gone through this period of, of restriction uh, and effectively of exile in this time of lockdown. But yet God is, I believe, using this time for us. He's certainly using it for me to refresh our vision, 
to uh, reorient and, and, and remind us of who we are and what we're here to do so that when we do get back to this meeting, this gathering together, once again, we get back with renewed zeal and hunger and a power as God's Spirit works through us. And if you're listening to this message today and, and actually you're, you're sort of looking in from outside, you're looking into Foundation Church and asking what we're about and what we're like and what's the pastor like and all that stuff, you, it's important that you know this, that we are a group, an eager group of pioneers. We are hungry for God and, and, and for his kingdom uh, and we're hungry to see that come to pass in Belfast and beyond. We want to know his kingdom, his power, his glory. We want to see that coming. And if that excites you, and if you want to be a part of that, then join us. But listen, we, we, we never want that pioneering spirit to leave us. This is not just a phase or a part of our history that eventually gives way to something else. We always want to be pioneering, to possess this pioneering spirit as a church. It's not just a phase, but it's a trait. It's a value. It's part of who we are. And so as, as a church together, we are always going to be asking ourselves, what's next? We're always going to be looking and asking, what is God leading us to do? What, 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 what does he have for us next? What is he saying to us as a community? And how must we obey him right here and right now? Where shall we plant our next church? What area shall we reach into? What, what ministry must we start? We're always going to be asking these questions because we have and will retain this pioneering spirit as a church. And so if you are looking in to Foundation Church, may I um, warmly warn you if you're looking for a comfortable church uh, one that's predictable if you're looking for the safe option then that is not us that is not us yes we will care for one another and people who come and join to our community absolutely we will show grace to one another completely we will encourage one another. We will strengthen one another. But at our very heart, we are a community on mission. And we will always possess this pioneering spirit. If that excites you and you want to be a part of what God is doing with us, we'd love you to join us. So the first thing we see in Ezra chapter 2 is that the community on mission has a pioneering spirit. Verse 1. 